Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture in our programming languages course we are going to talk about the concept of uh, control abstraction. So uh, we have been mentioning this uh, term abstraction uh, throughout the course and we started remember talking about abstract machines in, in general and uh, as you recall uh, to abstract basically means uh, to hide something and uh, notice that uh, every scientific discipline uh, describes a certain phenomenon but concentrating only on aspects which have been found to be the most relevant in, in many cases when we describe things we can't go into the nitty-gritty details of the things we have to abstract away from it and uh, in in a certain sense we we can say that we are then hiding something but we are hiding things that are not uh, crucial for the description we are hiding something that is uh, a, a, a minor detail and uh, in the uh, in the programming languages or computer science world, we're often hiding implementation detail. Uh, and notice also that programming languages are just uh, abstractions of the physical machine. We, we are, we are model, modeling the machine using a particular language. And we abstract, abstract away from the, the, from the very detail of the underlying machine. Now, in general, we can say that we have uh, two classes of uh, abstraction mechanisms. Uh, uh, what is called control abstraction, and that's that's the what we're focusing on here. And this is uh, this is abstraction that uh, provides the programmer the ability to hide procedural data. So we make procedures or functions, and we hide the data or, or, or a functionality inside those procedures or functions. And the second class is data abstraction, which allows us to define and use data types without referring to how such types are implemented. And this is uh, uh, what is called uh, abstract data types. Now, if we talk about subprograms in, in general, uh, then we might ask ourselves first, why do we use subprograms? Well, in, in an elementary programming course, students are, are taught to decompose a problem into uh, subtasks because uh, it allows better management of the complexity. Uh, if we restrict the problem, then it's easier to solve. So if we decompose the problem into individual tasks, uh, the individual tasks are easier to solve. And then the solution to the overall problem is obtained by uh, the composition of the uh, uh, sub-solution, of, of the solutions to the sub-problems. And this is, uh, this is the uh, common way of tackling a large problem in, in computer science or software engineering by decomposing the problem into smaller problems, each of which are easier to solve than the original problem. And so in order for us to be able to do this, of course, the programming language uh, must provide some, <coughs> some support for, for, for uh, this subdivision. And the subprogram or the procedure or function is then the, the key concept provided by all modern languages. Uh, if we uh, look at the modern programmer languages, then all of them have this ability to define subprograms. Now, uh, here, there's, there is a, uh, often there's a distinction between a procedure and function. Remember, a procedure in general does not return a value, whereas a function returns a value. And notice that it says here that, that this is the key concept provided by all modern languages. And uh, f for the very first languages that appeared, uh, uh, this was not the case. The first languages did not have uh, the ability to uh, define subprograms. programs 
so if we if we start with functions then <coughs> and uh, uh, notice that here actually we're just uh, uh, using function as a name for both procedures and functions so function here is a function that could return a value or could not return a value Remember, for example, in C or C++, everything is a function. If it doesn't return a value, it actually returns a special value called void. So a function is a piece of code identified by a name. And it, it is given a local environment of its own, meaning that uh, if we uh, declare, uh, for example, uh, variables inside the, the function, they are local to that given block. Uh, and also the parameters that are supplied, the formal parameters, are also local in the function. They cannot be referred to from outside. Uh, but we can exchange information with the, with the outside world, meaning the rest of the code, using parameters. Uh, uh, return value and non-local uh, non -local environment. So can, we can uh, supply the function with parameters and the parameters can be of different types and we will we'll, we will discuss that a little bit later the the function can return a value and the, that function can actually refer to a non-local environment meaning for example variables that are declared in uh, an, an enclosing block and there are two linguistic mechanisms that, that are associated with, with functions. Uh, that's the definition, or that's often called the declaration also of a function, and its use. So if we just look at this uh, simple example here, we have a definition of the function at the top, int foo. It has some parameters. It has a, a local variable called temp. Uh, it has a return value, it's, uh, it's uh, specified here first, it's an integer that is returned and it has a special uh, statement for returning, uh, which is the keyword return. Then, when we use the function, we have a different linguistic mechanism, we just give the name, then we open a parenthesis and we enumerate the parameters and then we close the parameters. So, it, we distinguish between the definition of the function and, and the use of the function. Now, the parameters uh, are two kinds. Uh, the formal parameters are the ones that appear in the definition of the function, and they behave like local declara declarations. So these that appear in the definition are called formal parameters and they behave like local declarations because uh, they are local to the function. These two param parameters, n and a, cannot be referenced from outside. Uh, then we have the actual parameters, which are the parameters that appear inside the call. So the actual parameters are the ones that we supply when we call the function. So in the first case here, the actual, the first actual parameter is three, and the second actual parameter is zero, and these two <coughs> actual parameters are associated with the formal parameters. Uh, there are different methods for this association, the different parameter passing modes or disciplines, and we will talk about that later. And in the second example, uh, x plus 1, or the value of x plus 1, is associated with n, and the value 1 is associated with a. So we distinguish between formal parameters that appear in the definition of the function, and the actual parameters that appear in the call itself. Uh, Now, the par parameters are, are given uh, a local environment of its own. Oh, sorry, sorry, this, this is uh, incorrect. This is something that uh, came from the previous slide. So just ignore this third bullet point here. What I wanted to say was that the, the number and the type of the actual and formal parameters must in general coincide. 
So we're saying here that if in the definition of the function I specify two parameters, then I must supply two parameters, two actual parameters. If I if I declare two formal parameters and in the definition of the function, then I must supply two parameters, two actual parameters in, in the call. Now, however, there, and this is a general rule, and there are some uh, examples that where uh, one can declare functions with a variable number of parameters. And that is, for example, in the, uh, to name one example, is the printf function in C. The printf function uh, has a variable number of uh, parameters. Now, return value, we have talked a little bit about this. Some, function, some functions exchange information with the rest of the program by returning a value as a result of the function itself. And that's what we saw here. This particular function foo has a return value, which is int. Uh, and uh, we have also s discussed this second point here, that in some languages the name function is reserved for subprograms which actually return a value. So some programming languages distinguish between a function and a procedure. So if the given subprogram does not return a, a value, then uh, when one is uh, de defining the function, one would use the keyword uh, procedure, for example. This is the case in Pascal. Pascal has two, two dif different kinds of subprograms. Uh, one is called uh, procedure, and the other one is called a function. And the function is the one that returns a value, whereas a procedure doesn't return a value. Uh, now, and as we mentioned earlier, uh, in, in C or C++, uh, or, or uh, in general, languages that derive their syntax from C, uh, all subprograms are linguistically just functions. So if the result type of function is void, the function doesn't return a, a meaningful value. So C, C++, Java do not have this distinction between a procedure uh, and a function. So we have we have seen that uh, a subprogram can uh, communicate with the outside world using the parameters, it can also communicate re uh, using a return value. And the last thing is that it can communicate using the non-local environment. Uh, and this is especially true for uh, languages that allow uh, nested functions. So a particular variable inside a function <clears throat> which is uh, not declared in the function, is then a non-local reference. So that's actually something that we do not have in this particular example here. We have int temp, so this is a local declaration. But if you imagine that this variable temp would not be declared locally, and we would just have temp is equal to a instead of int temp is equal to a, then a uh, temp would be a reference to a variable that is non-local in the non-local environment. And then the question is, where would that uh, variable, variable be declared? Well, either in the enclosing block or um, in the global environment, meaning then that would, the variable would then be global to uh, any function in the, or all functions in the program. So, it is important to, to understand that uh, uh, subprograms have three ways of communicating with the outside world. It's using the parameters of the, of the uh, uh, function, it's using a return value, and it's using the non-local environment.